Again, welcome to Java Programming Language. This is Unit 2, Lecture Number 4. Our main objective is to describe the software development process and apply it to develop the loan payment program. We're also going to write a program that converts a large amount of money into smaller units. So we start with the software development process. Here we have different phases. The first phase is the requirement specification, system analysis, system design, implementation, testing, deployment, and maintenance. Again, as we can see the arrow, we normally will start from the top down, but sometimes we may we can come back up. So for example, I mean the requirement specification, I was able to gather all the specification, both functional and non-functional. Then I move to system analysis and I move to system design, start to design the system and I find a fault or an error. I can go back to system analysis to analyze the system again, or maybe go back to requirement specification. So we can move again down or again, depends on the process. So the requirement specification normally, that's the most important phase. Here we have to understand the problem that the system will solve. Again, anytime we are developing a software, because we want to use it to solve a problem or for entertainment. So we have to understand the problem. And in the process, we have to collect both the functional and non-functional requirements from the stakeholders, the project stakeholders, such as the users, the managers, et cetera, the sponsors of the projects, those who know the system operations. So after we collect the specification, both functional and non-functional, then we move to the system analysis. This is where we are going to analyze the system, identify what will be the input to the system and what will be the output from the system. So normally in the requirement specification, example of a functional requirement will be the tax that the system will perform, the functions that it will perform. Non-functional will be the quality or the attribute of the system. For example, are we more concerned about the security of the system? The system is well secured, but the performance is very poor. That means the speed process is very poor. So we have to consider, for example, user friendliness, maintainability, and robustness of the system, etc. So let's go through the steps. So first we start, the, we start with the requirement specification. So here we say it's the formal process that seek to understand the problem and document in detail what the software system need to do. So as we said earlier, this is the phase that we have to understand the problem that the software will solve. And possible we document all the possible tasks, the functions of the system, and also the attributes of the system. And here we said that most of the examples in the in our textbook are very simple. In this course, most of the problem we are going to solve with Java, they are very simple. And their requirements are clearly stated. But again, in the real world, we may have a very large, complex problem to solve project to be very large and maybe it to take months, if not years, to solve it. So in this case, we need to take our time to design the system, document everything before we start implementation. So next, we move to the system analysis phase. So the system analysis phase, this is where we seek to analyze the business process in terms of data flow and identify the system inputs and outputs. I think that's the most important, identify the system input and output. Because when we move to the next stage, which is the design phase, now how do we transform the input to the output? So that's where we have to design our algorithms. So here we say part of the analysis entails the modeling the system behavior. So the model is intended to capture the essential element of the system and to define the services to the system. So next, we move to the system design. This is the process of designing the system components. This is the step that we have to use any tools that is available to design the algorithm and everything possible. So this phase involves the use of many levels of abstraction to decompose the problem into smaller 
or manageable components. Here we need to identify all the possible classes, if any interfaces, establishment of relationships among all the classes and also in the interfaces. So here we can design our class diagram. Uh, if we need a use case or sequence diagram, everything must be done here. This is the design phase. Normally this is object oriented concept. We use the UML, that's the Unified Modeling Language, which consists of around 14 different diagrams. We can use all these diagrams to design the system. For example, how the system will, how people will react with the system, we may use a use case diagram so we can see different actors. So, for example, if you are designing a system for a library, let's say a library system, maybe the library manager can interact with the inventory system. He can again manage, but a person who's coming to borrow a book can only either return a book or borrow a book. So again, that's the whole set. The design phase is very important. This is where we get the input, process, output, etc. Now, when we finish with the design phase, then we move to the implementation. So implementation is where now, this is the, the phase that we are going to write the code. Uh, if it's Java, here yeah, we are going to use the Java program to again develop the system. So here we say the process of translating the system design into programs. Separate programs are written for each component and to put together later. So for example, in the system design phase, if we identify 20 different classes, here we are going to implement all the classes. Then we integrate them together. Then after we finish, we move on to the testing phase. So again, implementation phase requires the use of the programming language such as Java, the implementation involving coding, testing, and debugging. So next is the testing phase. We finish with our coding. We want to make sure there's no error. The system is working. So here we ensure that the code meets the requirements specification and also weeds out bugs. Now, if it doesn't meet the requirement specification, then mostly we have to go back and somewhere around implementation system design to find out where the fault is. So an independent team of software engineers not involved in the design and implementation of the project usually will under the testing. And normally this is one of the entry level job for software engineering. That's a software testers. Most of the testers, they are not involved with implementation. So it's like independent. Okay, so if we pass the testing, the system is good, then we put it in operation. So the deployment makes the project available for use. Then after a while, maybe we may need the maintenance of the system. So maintenance is concerned with changing and also improving, improving the products. Maybe we can develop a new version that will include more features, etc. So let's see one program here. Here we are going to see a program. This is in Java. It's about computing a loan payment. So this program let the user enter the interest rate of the loan, the number of years you have to take to pay it, and also the loan amount. Then, so if we know the interest rate, the number of years, and the loan amount we can compute the monthly payments and also the total payment for the whole. The formula is given to us here. So again, let's see our Java. So again, we need to get the input from the user. So we are using our scanner class. Uh, the main class is compute loan. So the program name is compute loan or Java. We have our main method. So the first thing we do is to create a scanner object called the input. Then we ask the user to enter the yearly interest for example, if it's 10%, uh, you should write 10.0. If it's 8.25%, you write 8.25. So we use the, again, the percent will be in decimal. So we use the nest double method with the scanner object input to enter the interest rate into a variable name, annual interest rate. Again, the data type is double. Next, we are going to obtain the monthly interest rate. So we tell the user 
calculate the monthly interest rate, we already know the annual interest rate. So we are going to divide the annual interest rate by 12, which will make it monthly. But this time we want to change it to decimal number instead of percent. So we also divide by 12 times 100, which will give us 1,200, because the 8.25 is in percent. So we change it to the small value to be 0 0.0825. So now we have our monthly interest rate in decimal value. Next, we tell the user to enter the number of years for the loan. And this time the number of years is int. The variable name is number of years. So we use the next int method input there. Then next, we need to enter the loan amount. So we ask the user enter the loan amount. Then we use again next double because the loan amount data type is double. So now we have all the data we need. Uh, the value we have the low amount, the monthly interest rate. So we convert the formula to Java to calculate the monthly payment. It will be low amount times the monthly monthly interest rate divided by one minus one divided by math dot power which is uh, our is the exponent. So it's one, uh, one plus monthly interest rate raised to the power of number of years times 12. Remember the power method takes two arguments. The first value here is one plus monthly interest rate because the comma will be the base. The number of years times 12 will be the exponent. So we raise it up. Then when we get the answer, we are going to find the total payment for the whole period. So it will be monthly rate times the number of years times 12. So the monthly payment times 12 will give you one year, then times the number of years will give us total payment. Now, the last thing we need to do is to display our results. So here we say system.out.printerland, the monthly payment is whatever amount we enter. Then the calculation of total payment also whatever we get, we enter it. So that will be the conclusion of this program. And let's go back to our lectures. So we also have another program named monetary units. So in this program, we are going to ask the user to enter an amount, then we convert the amount to lower unit. So for example, this is the main method. We have our scanner object again. We ask the user to enter the amount. So for example, $11.56. Now, when we enter the amount, the first thing we do here is that we convert the amount times 100. Remember, means everything will be in cent. $11.56 is the same as saying 1,156 cents. So whatever amount we have, we multiply by 100, automatically it's become int because cent is only two decimal places. So now we know the full amount, remaining amount. Now, first thing we want to find the number of dollars. So if I have any amount of cent, if I divide by 100, that will give me the amount of dollars. So we say remaining amount divided by 100, that gives us the amount of dollars. We want to know the remaining balance. So we use the remainder, remaining amount modulus 100, which means if I divide the remaining amount by 100, the remainder, I will put it in the variable name, remaining amount again. Then I'm going to divide the remaining value by 25 because our next amount money will be quarters from dollars to quarters. So when I divide by 25, it will give me the number of quarters. Then after that, I want to know the remaining amount. So remaining modulus 25 means start divide the value by 25. What is the remaining? We are going to put it in the remaining amount again. And this time we are going to look for the time. So we divide by 10. Then we divide the remaining amount again, modulus 10, which means after we divide by 10, the remaining amount we want to be here. Then we divide by five to get the number of nickels. Then we make mod loss five to get the remaining uh, remaining amount after dividing by five. And after that, the rest will be pennies. So the amount remaining will be the more pennies. 
So now we are going to output all the all display all the results output. So the number of dollars first, the number of quarters, dime, nickels, and pennies. So that will be the conclusion for these lectures. Again, these lectures we focus on the concept of software development process and wish to see you in our next lectures.